All right, welcome back to Inside the Story. We're here with Kurt Schlichter, a columnist for Town Hall, veteran, and a lawyer. Kurt, thanks for coming on. Hey, I'm a multi multi talented Renaissance man. <laughs> we need more of that, and, and a comedian, right? Uh, I have been been accused. <laughs> uh, you know, what about all this stuff going on with? DeSantis and Abbott sending migrants. You saw the uh, the migrants getting shipped out of Martha's Vineyard. What do you make of that? You saw all these happy liberals. Well, they're not there. migrants; they're illegal aliens. Sorry, and, uh, and I uh, I am uh, uh, I, I am utterly indifferent to them being used as political props. I mean, how can you use human beings as a political prop? And it's like, well, by flying them to a bunch of liberals. Uh, strongholds and dumping them there. That is that is literally how you can do it. If you're asking me morally, how can I uh, 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 create the only possible space for any debate on this issue? Well, the voila. I love these. Um, there's two kinds of people I freaking despise. I despise liberals uh, and I despise uh, conservatives who claim to have principles. The Heath Mayo contingent. <laughs> because how can we do it's not who we are it's not i'm doing the pearl clutching it's not who we are we're better than that I, i'm not better than that okay i'm not a bit i don't lose uh -huh. all right nobody ever came and tried to hire me as a lawyer going kurt i want you to fail in the army they didn't say okay glorious defeat everybody that's that's what we're after glorious defeat let's now let's start studying retreats We've, yeah retain no principles and <laughs> yeah yeah here's my principle OK, anything that makes me less free is a pretty crappy principle and I'm not going to do it. All right. So the idea that somehow I'm, uh, you know, I, I love when they're like, well, we, we should debate reasonably and have a have a discussion about these issues and these stunts. They're just, oh, oh, it just makes me shake, literally. And it's like, well, first of all, stop being such a damn sissy. Second of all. When's this debate take place? Okay. When are we allowed to talk about illegal aliens? Okay. Go turn on ABC News. I'll give you 12 hours. How much time do they spend at the Texas border? They spend none. There is no debate. The idea that we're supposed to debate it. Where do we go to debate it? Are they going to meet me down, uh, down at the uh, uh, town square? And when the crier's finishing with his morning report, we're going to kick it live, yeah. debating <laughs> about the thing. The only way that you get attention in a system where the establishment has de decreed that there will be no debate about forbidden subjects is a stunt that forces it. Mm -hmm. And either they can't see that or they won't see that. And I, I don't want to necessarily call it malice on their part because they're stupid and they don't know what they're doing. And they have a track record of conserving nothing as concern. Oh, here we go. Hold on. There I am. <laughs> Looks better. Framed again. Uh, you know, I'm as good a producer as they are at being conservatives. I am sick of conservatives <laughs> who conserve nothing. Yeah. I'm sick of libertarians who don't believe in liberty. Mm -hmm. And I'm sick of Democrats who don't like democracy. Well, what do you, what do you mean by libertarians who don't believe in liberty? I mean, the, I think the well, central component there, or is it just the idea that well, you, you uh, would take the loss, take the loss you, you every would time think. and never actually push back? Yeah, well, look, I, I, look, libertarianism has had a, a, a huge and largely positive effect on the conservative movement. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, I don't think when we think of conservatives, though, I think he is uh, uh, underappreciated at the current time. Most conservatives do not want to go to a John Lithgow and footloose conservative vibe. Mm -hmm. OK, we want to let the kid we want the kids want to rock and you can't make them stop. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you know, in John Lithgow's uh, Footloose Town, you didn't have a bunch of perverts trying to have sex with your children while being teachers in schools. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, I, I, I think we need to look at liberalism like everything else critically. That is not – and stupid people think critical. That just means criticize. No, critical means analyzing it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I often say, look, I tried tolerance – and what I got are people trying to groom my kids in schools. So, you know, let's not give tolerance a bad name mm -hmm. um, by uh, by being blind about it. You, you know, the fact that you're a libertarian doesn't mean you can't have standards. The fact that you're a libertarian or even libertarian influence, I think, uh, especially at Breitbart Rand, is heavily libertarian influenced. Sure. Uh, and, and it's, po I, I think, generally positive. But you get some libertarians who don't, uh, you know, who 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 go into the theoretical 
and want to live in the theoretical. And, you know, it's not theoretical to me when a hobo wants to take a dump on my lawn. Okay. It's you don't like get a true California hobo. resident. Yes. No, no. no <laughs> I, and I'm not trying, that's like literally a thing. Um, you know, I, I don't think it clashes with uh, the, the undercurrent of libertarianism that you don't get to be a bum. You do not get to live on the street. You do not get to drop your, uh, 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 the, the, your hypodermic needles and last night's dinner on my sidewalk. Sure, you still have to contribute I'm not going to and live. keep that like, a, a nice yes. system going where we're yes. actually going to have it, these it, kind of reasonable society. Yes, look, I, I mean, uh, you know, the more libertarian you are, the better uh, the people have to be mm -hmm. because they're going to guide themselves. Libertarianism... Uh, as I understand it, and I, I'm not a member of the party, and I don't read Ayn Rand, uh, and, um, you know, uh, it, 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 they take the role of governing from governor, government to mm -hmm. individuals. Mm -hmm. But there's always governing. Okay? If you don't have governing, you don't even have anarchy, as the anarchists will tell you about endlessly, because mm -hmm. they're worse, with, worse than crossfitters and militant atheists. They never shut up. Much like me in this interview. <laughs> and they, um, uh, you know, e even anarchists aren't, well, you know, today I'm going to pick up an axe and go plan in the head of my bud my neighbor. Yeah. Okay. P people living together ha have got to have guidelines. Uh, where do the guidelines come from, I think, is the essence of some of the uh, uh, greatest issues in politics. If you come from individuals enforcing them upon themselves uh, because they are mature and responsible and they have a, a moral framework, or are they imposed by a, a democratic regime where we have uh, elected bureaucrats working within uh, a, a system and a set of rules respecting rights, or do we have a dictatorship where you better do what I say or else? Absolutely. I mean, those, those are your questions, right? Yeah. So I read your book a while ago, actually. It was uh, the uh, we'll be back the fall and rise of america i thought that one was pretty awesome and you talked about how you know you you're in the gulf war uh defeated saddam hussein the first time yeah and not me i was the, so far in the rear you'd have to fedex <laughs> bullets to hit me the rear echelon guys they were in front of me yeah. i'm no pete Buttigieg. i'm no war hero oh. um uh but do, do you know how to drive trains and all that it, yeah uh. um. <laughs> trains, trains. It, it, don't even get me started about trades. The ultimate <laughs> liberal dream. We will control when you go and where you go and how you get there. On the it's, right you know, track. It, yeah, on the right track because it's an important system, and I promise they'll run on time. Yeah. But your book, so you're talking about the fall and rise. When's the rise of America coming? Like, what are you talking it's about happening there? now. You, it's you're happening sure. today. You're sure. I mean, you've yes. only got a couple of Republicans who are actually throwing punches like Ron DeSantis and uh, Abbott sometimes. Yeah, well, look, when uh, when uh, uh, Mitch McConnell, who is losing a step, and I've defended Mitch McConnell against a lot of conservatives purely on the basis of tactical and strategic prowess. I mean, he was just very, very good at what sure, he I did. Sure, I mean, he's he okay. delivered the Supreme Court that we have currently. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, absolutely. It's undeniable. You always have to, look, always got to uh, assess your opponents accurately. You know, or, I don't understand people who want to make their enemies stupid. First of all, when you beat them, that doesn't make you good. It just makes you beat an idiot. But also, you you end up underestimating. So he, he, he is very good, but he's losing a lot of steps. And one of the steps was, I don't understand why he signed on for a totally unnecessarily gun control thing. It wasn't even right after Uvalde. It was like weeks later. Mm -hmm. And he lets Cornyn run with it. He lets 15 people vote for it, 15 Republicans. Mm-hmm. Though the number of Republicans sent to the Senate to vote in favor of gun control was precisely zero. It was not one with that mandate. Did anyway, I think it was a mistake. Ten years ago, it would have been 30. So we're making progress there. Uh, other evidence, Glenn Youngkin, Purple State. Uh, you look at the uh, school board thing, the, the terrorist moms mm -hmm. demanding that they be allowed to participate in their own governance. Uh, which I was informed was part of my democracy and mm -hmm. super important, so important. Oh, yeah. that you, you can totally have... see the, uh, yeah. the the headlines if it was the other side for that. But then again, that's yeah. the um, the fault of yeah. all conservatives. Oh, imagine if the other side had done this. I am so tired of that. I am mm -hmm. so tired of that. Well, you know, if it were Trump, imagine what, because for those of us who are based, mm -hmm. we're beyond that. It would just good, good so... operative word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're ba look, I mean, it's just like if you're trying to point out liberal hypocrisy to me, don't bother. 
That's yeah. for normals. You you, you that's do the it. Base, baseline of the left these days. Oh yeah. yeah. But you look you you it, 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 if you're in the if you're in the movement, don't be talking about. Oh my gosh, liberals get away with everything. We know that. Okay, it's not cool to say it because then you look like a sap. You only say it to normal people who don't realize it because they were you know outgrowing ribeyes until the ribeyes became fifteen dollars a pound, <laughs> uh, and now they're noticing. You do it to them, but not yeah. to us. We're cool. We're the cool kids. Mm -hmm. We're beyond. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't bother with that. But, yeah. uh, uh, other, uh, but other, uh, another indicator, I think it's a huge indicator. I think it is the biggest political event, uh, since Trump himself is, uh, Latinx Americans flocking in huge numbers over to the Republican party. Are those Completely. the non-binary ones or are those just everyday Latinos? Uh, well, you know, I look, I'm not going to choose Los Genderos de Los Latinxos. <laughs> Um, which I just gendered it. Uh, my my wife, of course, is Cuban and just loves that. If you want to, if you want to really get her, go up to her in a Che T-shirt and say, "Are you Latinx?" That'll work great. Um, but the the thing I find very interesting: the faith, family, freedom, people. Uh, these are great Americans, hardworking. Uh, you know, look, I am a hawk on illegal immigration. This is my country. You ask my permission to come in. Sure. I'll let you come. I, I married an immigrant. I'm not any immigrant. Uh, although evidence like that means nothing because we don't have debates. So you go, Kurt, well, you're a racist. I, I mean, did marry a... This is also a uh, subject to white supremacy. And well, it's a bourgeois conceit. Thing. Exactly. It's Thank you. Is. Better it's term. bourgeois there. conceit. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, uh, I, I just think, look, the Democrats went all in on uh, Latinx voters. Uh, you remember the, was it Roy Texerera, the uh, emerging Democrat emer yes. majority? Yep, yep. I remember and that, that was, yeah, that was hugely based on the idea that uh, Hispanic Americans will come here mm -hmm. and uh, they will remain a permanent underclass looking for scraps off our table. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they ever met, uh, <laughs> super condescending. <laughs> but remember, uh, a lot of modern, uh, 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 salon room liberalism is based on racist assumptions mm -hmm. uh, and, and literal said. white supremacy. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I guess what, ha, have you ever met anybody who's Hispanic who wasn't working for you? Because I look at, you know, every construction company out here is like Garcia Rodriguez construction. Mm -hmm. These guys come here and they do nothing but work and they build and they work and they take care of their families and they do not want to be somebody's, uh, you know, dog waiting for you to drop, you know, a little bit of the fat off your sirloin. Sure. Uh, down to them. They're not waiting for that. They're taking it. Mm -hmm. And they want, they want to be, and, and there's one party that's at least not actively anti-freedom. <laughs> that's the Republican Party, yeah. uh, which has its problems. But, you know, if, you, if, if you're going to uh, a typical Hispanic American who wants to take care of his family, uh, he's probably served in the Marines or something. Because mm -hmm. this is, a, I mean, this, this is a, 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 a group that very, very much respects uh, a military service. Mm -hmm. I know I, I was in the California National Guard. You know, I mean, there's a, these are great warriors. And you're in Southern California. You must and I'm in this. Southern California. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These are these are terrific people. And they don't want to be uh, anybody's saps, but they, they look at it and they're like, okay, here's the, you know, the Republican Party is, you know, it's going to cut my taxes. Uh, they're not going to screw with me with all these government regulations, at least not as much. And uh, they're not going to, uh, you know, they, they, they like America, which I like. Uh, I mean, I came here. I mean, that's pretty <laughs> demonstrative. And they, uh, you know, and, and, and they're not the party of sending my kid to school and having Jose come back Isabella. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, they, they, they don't like that nonsense. So they are in huge numbers coming to the Republican Party. This is and, devastating. They, they, and the Democrats, nobody talks about it, but the Democrats put all they were all in on Hispanics being the permanent yep, minority. And that this. was going to lock everything in. And that's yep. the whole basis of this open border. They think these guys coming into the country are all going to be Democrats. And a lot of them will. Uh, maybe half, maybe a little more, but maybe a little less. You have a bunch of Venezuelans in here, okay? They're not, and uh, you know, the, yeah, the <laughs> idea that Hispanics are interchangeable is, you know, another 
Well, yeah, yeah. you read the autopsy they did after uh, 2020 saying like, oh, wow, we realize our messaging doesn't work on just like by counting people as just a monolithic group. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's a a rare positive insight. Yeah. (laughs) Not that they're they're racist. That's why they didn't vote for us. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's it is. uh, Look, these were folks. Many of them had experience with socialism, communism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. they're coming here to work. Look, again, I am a hawk on immigration. Mm-hmm. I want to deport all illegal aliens because you can't violate a law passed by our uh, representative, signed into law, and, and and just get reward for it. If you want to talk about an attack on democracy, that's literally an yep. attack on democracy. Yep. You, you Democracy is not, okay, we have an election. Democracy is we have an election, and our elected officials get to pass laws which get enforced, and our yep. voice is actually heard. It's not heard and ignored. Mm-hmm. Um, but you you got to say, you know, these are people who pay a ton of money to very sketchy coyotes, uh, risk their lives to cross deserts to come here to largely get minimum wage menial jobs so their kids don't have to get that. Yeah. So I, I, in some ways, these are people, you know, I kind of want to be here. Mm-hmm. But you can't, you, you don't get to come here without asking. Legal process. Uh, Kurt, right. last couple minutes here and final question. Uh, who's the most embarrassing Democrat today besides <laughs> Joe Biden? You can't say Joe Biden. Well, look, first of all, you uh, you have to have a shame gene. Uh, the one of, one of the miracles the Democrats have had is they have, through having a regime media and an establishment that agrees, we're just not going to have accountability. None of the old accountability things wrong. There's no sh- there's no social shunning. Mm-hmm. There's no uh, the media is not going to get on you if you're a Democrat. They'll actively cover for you, a la Hunter Biden. Uh, so there's no reason to. You, it, 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 if you're not going to have shame and force, you're not going to have shame. Yeah. Okay. I was a lawyer. My shame gene was removed in law school. <laughs> Look, um, but if we did have a system like that, I, I, I'd have to go for Eric Swalwell. Uh, yeah, he's my favorite. The the flatulent guy who actually thought his hard five commie spy was into him because he was cool. Fang Fang. Fang Fang. Yeah. yeah bang Bang with Fang Fang. <laughs> yeah. That's just, I mean, it's just so pathetic. We're walking He's across that, the street in the snow with the the, uh, the Starbucks. Remember that one? Yeah. He, yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just it, he's just the ultimate uh, loser who thinks he's cool because some mediocre chick was paying attention to him. And it was it'd be like, you know, she's paying attention to him because she's going to he's going to buy him dinner. He's got a nice car. But mm. then she's going to go home and like, you know, bang a bartender. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's just, I mean, it's just so, it's just so perfect. It's just come. It, he, he's this perfect uh, kind of self righteousness, stupidity, and narcissism. He's the kind of guy who go, oh, you can't have assault weapons. We have nuclear weapons, and it's yeah. like, I'm not even going to start. I mean, you can read my book. We'll be back on Rise of America to yeah. understand the the mechanics of why that might not be such sure. a big threat there, Eric. But it, it's just, you know. He is the perfect embodiment of our liberal elite. Yeah. Dumb, corrupt, narcissistic, unaccountably impressed with himself, though he's literally accomplished nothing. This guy has literally accomplished. You look at all these people. What have these guys accomplished? What's the what's the big score that any of these guys have done? I mean, even look at Hillary. Remember when she was running? I mean, she she basically was allegedly the baby oven for Bill Clinton. Yeah. Okay. That's, I mean, that's her thing. But what's her accomplishment? What's the thing she did? And she's running for president. Her her big accomplishment was I raised awareness of that women's rights are human rights. The hell is that? I I don't understand. I made a birdhouse and shop. That's an accomplishment. Yeah. You know, what what are you talking about? These are unaccomplished people. We have an elite that's not elite. They've never built anything. They've never done anything. They've never served anything but themselves. Mm-hmm. They got these credentials from, you know. Uh, all with other uh, people's money. Oh, all with yeah. other people's money. Yeah. They have they have credentials from overpraised, overrated universities, yet they literally know nothing. Here's how bad they are. Biden's surrounded by all these, like, 25-year-old mm-hmm. who've never done anything, mm-hmm. right? And when I was 25 and I got to law school, I was 26, got to law school, I had been a platoon leader in a war. Anyway, you have these young people at the White House and they're doing some sort of uh, 
question and answer thing with uh, uh, President Gumby, and uh, somebody asked him, "Hey, you know, are you you know with, with, with your infrastructure thing, are you gonna get the trains running on time?" And whoever's typing back for the president goes, "Why, yes, we will have the trains running on time." And it's like, you don't, you never encounter that in school, so you don't know why that's like literally the worst thing you could possibly say. And they just don't know. What they don't know is legion. What they don't know is endless and boundless. And yet they have absolutely no doubt about their own competence to perform basic tasks. But it's not there. We are the worst elite in American history. It's corrupt. It's venal. It's unaccomplished. It is not patriotic. It is completely self-centered. They think that the institutions are purely a tool for their own advancement. And institutions you know, are obviously a tool for people's advancement. But, you know, the bargain is you got to actually do the job and they don't. They don't think they have to. Hence the total lack of accountability. Hence our country, uh, unless we turn it around, and I think we will, spinning down the drain. So that's kind of what I think.